A final face-off between the pair of them. It was intense yesterday at the weigh-in. Now it is time to get down to business. In the fight that we never knew we needed, but that we're so glad is now here. There goes the opening bell, Eubank in that white and red, Smith in the black and pink. You can see the height difference between the pair of them. On the tail of the tape, it's a couple of inches. Eubank stands quite upright at times. Smith will look to box out of a little bit more of a crouch. Keep that guard intact. Move that head off the punching line as much as he can. Eubank just looking to try and get on the jab early on. Smith just fainting with that front foot, trying to draw the jab from Eubank. Eubank falling just slightly short with it. Smith stooping, looking to try and grab a right hand into the body and then a little bit of a wrestle between the two. People have talked a lot about size during the week. Eubank has been up at super middle. This is at middleweight. Smith has had a few fights where he's weighed in at 159, but he's only really recently officially stepped up. They look good on the scales yesterday, the pair of them, can Eubank impose that physicality? That is a major question in this fight. Eubank trying to establish his jab here early on, and Liam Smith just trying to tie him. Good right hand there from Smith, timed it well. That was a quality shot. Drew something, and then managed to fire back with that right hand. Smith on the inside there, just looking to try and pump away to the body, George. Yeah, Eubank started sharp with his jab, but he's having to use in and out movement with his feet, which is, of course, not, not not energy efficient. So, you know, he doesn't really want to be doing that the whole night. Smith seems much more calm and composed to start with in his first round. He's tried to go up and down with his shots, head and body targeted. But there's not an awful lot in it at the moment, Andy. Both guys are trying to settle in and find their rhythm. It's the final minute of round one. Eubank is looking for that big right uppercut. That's a shot that people have picked out. Smith letting go with that right hand and looking to get after Eubank a little bit there. That got the crowd going on the far side of the ring, but nothing particularly clean or solid landed there from Smith. Eubank pulling out high after his jab, which is a risky move. Yeah, defence is a little bit leaky here from Eubank and Smith been able to capitalise with a couple of right hands over the top. Smith just dipping that head to the left hand side. That's where he'll generally tend to go when he wants to pull that head off the punching line. He loves that left hand to the body. Eubank just taking a little walk away to his right. And coming forward, Smith just quick with those feet, backs himself up, bell goes at the end of the opening round, as you were saying, George, with a minute to go, there wasn't a great deal in that one. No, I gave the round to Smith, I thought he just a little bit busier, and he, he looked like he landed one or two of the shots that were, that were more um, showy than, than, than Eubank. Right there at the end, he caught Eubank with a, with a right hand over the top, and they ended up clinching after. Not an awful lot in it, Andy, but uh, I, gave that, I think Smith shaded that first round. Yeah, I agree, I thought, you know, Eubank landed some nice jabs, but I thought Smith probably landed the better shots with the, uh, the right hand counters over the top of the jab of Eubank. But as George says, not a lot in it. There's that two arcos, give it a scan, get involved, score the fight. Cast your vote, give us your verdict. So into the second, Liam Smith with Joe McNally and Declan O'Rourke steering the ship in the corner. Ross Amber in there, brother Paul as well. Eubank with Roy Jones Jr. Ronnie Davis still a part of things. Looking to try and get onto that jab, Eubank. Snap that jab up from the waist, explode it up into the eye line. As he throws that right hand, Smith comes straight back with the left. Already more purpose about Eubank in this second. Yeah, he started this, this second round sharper. 
Um, put a bit more meat on the jab, and then he's varied that right hand. He's thrown it out straight, and he's thrown it as a right hook. Um, both landing, didn't have an effect, but he's starting to find his range. Smith looking for that right hand. Yeah, look, you, just... you, Eubank with the left hand low is a little bit leaky defensively down that left side, and Eubank's finding a home for the right hand, either just lead the lead straight right hands, they're, they're landing, they're getting through. Again, it's that looping overhand right, thrown in a kind of shallow arc that he's looking for. Then tries to find the uppercut. New bank though, just moving off to his right hand side, managed to avoid it just before that. Off the back of his own jab, New bank could look for a couple of quite extravagant shots. The right hand followed by a big uppercut. There's plenty of intent in there, not a huge amount landing clean just yet. New bank just dipping those knees, looking for the jab to the body. Eubank, you get the feeling there, just trying to tempt Smith in a little bit. Thanks for that front foot there, Eubank. Yeah, Smith is backing him up with a lot of head movement. It's clever stuff. He's trying to get a reaction out of Eubank for him to counter off of it. He got a nice sort of... He slipped out to his left and threw the right hand over the top, landed. Not a lot of power on it, but it's just showing that he's finding that range. Yeah, it's good stuff from Smith. Nice, patient stalking, triggering Eubank. Look for right hook there, Eubank. One of those two half landed. Smith Boat protecting himself well, taking that head off the line. Left hand into the body up close there from Liam Smith. Closing stages of round two. sits on that stool in the blue corner, Roy Jones, quickly, and let's see if we can have a listen. You enjoy yourself? That's all that now. You box them all day, you can't stand the face. The face will absolutely kill you. The face will get anything you want, the paws, all that. But if you ever lie there, if you can, throw a right hook down on that body. And hit you out of the middle. But when you go in, you pull it off real, right? When you lie there, and drop that right hook down to the body. Ball's turning, this is about the earth. All right? They tell you, fame make a pull up, fame and fame, drop it right if you can, but get down low, and go up high if you do it, okay? Up next to doing good. Jab is killing me, can't handle the fight. She ain't after you. You feel me? Anytime you get ready to start pushing that motor, you can't. But you can't fight going all the way. You let them have yourself a good time now because you, you just box them. But if you are boxing, that's not for me. Corners. 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 Ronnie Davis looking on through the ropes in that Eubank corner. Roy Jones with the advice. Davis, who's been a fixture in that now Eubank boxing dynasty for such a long time. Eubank again looking to land that jab. Smith with the with the head movement. to Lachlan giving them the opportunity to try and work on the inside there before separating the pair of them. Eubank just pulling that front foot back inch by inch to give himself just enough room to try and flick that jab. Smith dips underneath that lead left hand. Yeah, he was trying to, he was trying to give him a set of trap there for Smith. He was trying to use faint with the jab, faint with the jab, and then he was trying to go with the lead left hook, but Smith seen it coming and rolled out on the knee. Right hand there from Eubank just seemed to put Liam Smith onto his heels a touch. Good jab from Eubank, and again there, flicks it up from low, in and out with the jab that time.
Eubank teasing with that jab. He wants Smith to commit and counter him. Smith, he's not playing that game yet. We heard Jones in the corner of Eubank saying, bring that right hand into the body. He wants to bring it in behind the left elbow of Smith. He's yet to do it. I think he's trying to set him up for the lead left hook as well, George. Give him a few jabs, give him a few jabs, faint a little bit, and then go with the lead left hook, hoping that Liam goes for the parry. Mm. It's the final minute of the round three. Eubank again just busy with the jab. He has been all round so far, and this worked well for him. That one got through nicely, up through the guard, and again there. Putting a little bit more heat on it. Smith just trying to... Again, fake with that front foot, but he's just unable to really get too much off in this round, Smith. Good uppercut there from Eubank. It was pretty much at the end of its journey by the time that it landed, but it was a good shot nonetheless. Yeah, it goes for the oh, good uppercut there from Eubank. Goes again for it. Good shots there from Eubank. And and just again. got his feet a little bit closer there. He's landed two, three in a row, and this is a good round for Eubank. He's kept Smith occupied, as I was saying. He just hasn't been able to do too much of his work Smith and this is maybe just a little bit ominous big uppercut on the inside Smith is taking these okay at the minute but Eubank with, has put down the first significant marker in the fight here George yeah he has Andy that was a really good exchange from there at the end of the third round you, what you can't do with Chris Eubank Jr is stand still and it was the first time Liam Smith stood still stood in front of him and it's almost like target practice for Eubank Jr. who will punch with moving. dig his toes into the floor and dig away. The uppercut is breaking through the guard of Smith there. He brought the right hook round the side. It was the first time that it wasn't that educated pressure that had come from Smith. Where he was trying to back him up with a little bit of head movement, a little bit of sharp feet. But he was set up well before then with Eubank finding the range of his jab. He was touching with the jab, dropping back, touching with the jab. As, as, um, as Matt, Matt said, he was bringing that lead left hook into, into play as well. So it's coming from a different angle. First half of the round, Matt, he was looking for that jab, just throwing the jab, a steady diet of jab Smith was being fed, and then he looked a bit more expansive towards the end of the round, just got slightly closer, was shortly one uppercut, then just moved in and got tighter. Yeah, well, he kept him busy with the left hand, with the jabs, with the feints, with the lead left foot, but then it was the right hand, the uppercuts, uh, and he doubled up and even tripled up on that right uppercut. That was the shot that got through, and there's a marking on the nose now, Liam Smith, from those shots. Well, that's how you're seeing it at home. First round Smith, second round level, third round Eubank. So 29 apiece through three. The scheduled for 12. Eubank again just staying busy with that jab. You can get good power just launching it up from low. The man to my left knows all about that. It's landing on the guard. Sometimes it's getting through, but it's just not really giving Smith too much of an opportunity to do his own work. This time, though, let's go with the left. Yeah, I mean the ref could have stopped it. Yeah, I, I gave him every opportunity, 
I don't think, I'm not saying he should have stopped it, but he could have, couldn't he? No, no, yeah, exactly. No, you're right. This pay-per-view is it's the biggest, biggest stage. You deserve every chance you possibly can. He might have been able to buy some time and get through the round, get his legs under him. But Smith, we know he's he's he's, he's a wily old fox. He's a, he's, a, he's a highly skilled, highly experienced fighter. He's a good finisher. He would never let a fighter off the hook who's in that bad of trouble. I think that right hand there was a, with, a, with a heavy shot as well then. And Victor Lockland there, obviously making the right decision, you know, courteous to the fighter, you know, he's a, we're brave fighters, they, he wants to get up, he's let him get up and he's waved him off. And even then, Eubank still wanted to keep going, he didn't know where he was, it took everything away from him, that combination in the corner, it started with the left that made him really low at the knees, that's what set it all off, and then the accurate work from Smith, he just locked on, when he had him in trouble and that swelling under the right eye coming up there already so soon after the event we saw it in the corner just a few minutes ago and well what we know now or at least what we think we know is that we'll see this again because Eubank had a rematch clause should he lose that was utterly unthinkable for him he said that he would find defeat to Liam Smith almost impossible to deal with well as I said earlier on just because something is unthinkable, it does not mean that it is impossible. Liam Smith believed all the way through, right from the start, as did all of those brothers. And that belief was well founded. And after all of the back and forth during the build-up, this is what we always want to see and you almost always do see it yeah look a lot of things are said in the heat of the moment building up to a fight it's very rare you don't see that at the end of a fight very rare and that is good to see ladies and gentlemen referee Victor Loughlin calls a stop to this contest at one minute nine seconds of round number four declaring your winner by TKO Liam Such a big win for Liam Smith and George you said it earlier on this sport it makes fools of us all, and that is why we are so addicted to it. Because up there, when that bell goes, you just don't know. Smith was supremely confident, but it wasn't shared by all that many people necessarily in the fight game in the build-up to this fight, but what a crowning moment for him. Oh, yeah, this has got to be an, an absolute amazing moment for him. I think he's had his eye on Eubank for some time now. So to finally get that fight and get that win in this fashion must be unbelievable. OK, let's hear from him. He's up in the ring with Andy Scott. Liam, huge congratulations. So much to unpack there. This crowd, this atmosphere. Green, outside of your team, very few people in the trade, the casual sports fans thought that that result was possible. The chin, the Eubank jeans, it was unthinkable, but not impossible that you could do that. Is that one of the best shots of your career? Um, I don't know that it was one shot, I don't know if it was an accumulation, but Andy, I told you, all week, a lot got me. Chris has got a great chin. I've got a great chin, like, but there's many fighters with better chins who've been knocked out in the past, and I told you all week, don't be surprised, like, nobody should not be hurt, and that was the best thing, don't ever judge it, judge it by that. Talk us through what's going through your mind there in the early stages of the fight. Uh, no, what, I was just getting used to, you know what, he's got very long arms and he's very good at jabbing and pulling away, and look, I thought I, thought I would have gone into the fight as in uh, judge, judge, uh, judging that distance a little bit better as the fight went on, but, you know, Kiss is fast, I'm, I'm kind of known for a slow starter anyway, but... Like I said, slow starter or not, mate. You said it's an accumulation of... else could do. Well, on that, you say it's an accumulation of shots, but the, the left 
sort of come, screw shot, come uppercut that's left that well on his eye. That is a single shot that was just executed to perfection. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not even taking the myth. I cannot remember. I remember. I knew it. I knew I wobbled him, so I let, let them let them go. And look, I said, I said about Chris with Liam Williams. If I drop someone, they're not seeing him in the final bell. Certainly not four times. And I knew Chris was here, so I thought, yeah, I cannot let him off the hook. His fitness and condition would probably make him recover quick. But I think the next bundle of punches landed again. I've got good accuracy. It's always, what I've always been known as. My timing's very good. So um, I think once I hit him, I'd let him off the hook. You're not one for giving big predictions and talking things up, but your trainer, Joe McNally, I keep using this line. He said he's a credit to the sport in the terms of he's been around the world, he's got a T-shirt, not just one, but a wardrobe full. Canelo, Munguia, Anthony Fowler at the Echo, but I wonder where this, this atmosphere and this result, where it compares and where it rates. Look, this atmosphere, is the, this is the best, this ranks at the very top. Now, I can't thank these people enough for me. But anything, anything about tonight, Put this right at the top, doing what nobody's done. Big event, George Groves is a massive puncher at 168, couldn't do that. Like, he's been with big punches. You all made out to couldn't do it, be honest, you know what I mean? I'm not. Everybody made out them. I'd be a liar if I thought, you know what, I thought I'm that easy, but not, not that easy, I mean, I'll do him like that, but I said to you all week, don't be, don't be, like, don't be kidding that Chris can't be here because he's got a good chin. The man's got a very good chin, he's been big, he's got big punches, but if someone hits you on the right spot, you're going, and that's a fact. What's next? It was made very clear in the build-up to this that there was a rematch clause on that side. Um, like I said, look, if Chris wants the rematch, by all means, but the rematch is on my terms. My team will do 158 or 157 if you want. Listen, big congratulations to him. Listen, the better, you know, I, I, I felt like I could have got on, but he caught me with a great shot. Um, listen. The build-up was the build-up, we got a bit ugly at the end. I regretted that, you know, I respect you, I respect your family, I always have. Um, if the fans want to see a rematch, we can get on Anfield, you know, but big respect, man, I appreciate it. Same, obviously. The build-up was just like, again, it was something cheap with me and Chris, obviously. I think we, you know, especially me, I've been slaughtered for it, but, you know, it was just something cheap with Chris, there was nothing homophobic mentioned by my behalf. What does the future hold for you, Nixon? He said if you would do it again, so the question is, would you do it again? Or do you look at the other side of it? He was calling out Triple G. Does that mean now that you would like that shot? Look, I'll see. It depends on how much the money is going to pay me, but like, we'll see what's next. Um, you know, Chris wants the rematch. I, I, I agreed to a rematch clause before, and so that's down to Chris and Chris's team. Um, if not, then we move on. But I've got, I'm in a very good position now at 160 and 154. So I think, um, you know, over the next month or two, we've got big decisions to make. Ben Shalom, come on in. I mean, it's the fight that we probably didn't know that we needed, and it's grown into a domestic super fight. So will we see it again, do you think? Look, it'll be up to Chris. He has a rematch clause. Whether he wants that again will be up to him. What I would say is I've never met someone as mentally strong as this man. He had to put up with an awful lot of, a lot of rubbish this week. He's come through it, and he's put on a performance like that under pressure against Chris Eubank Jr. He deserves a lot of credit. I've never ever worked with a boxer like that, honestly. Congratulations to you, Liam. Well done.